Okay, sorry about that. So keeping your friends under control. Some of you may guess where this is already going, but so imagine you have a, uh, a class, peer class badger, of course, why not? And uh, has some members. You create an instance of this class badger. Notice it's in this namespace animals. Uh, of course, you can, you can call this free function that operates on, on badger. Um, just as it is, because we have ADL, argument dependent lookup. So there's the, the pieces. So I haven't looked at this for, for a little while. Um, of course, you can also qualify that free function with the namespace that it's in. And that works as well. Then we're not using ADL. But interestingly, if you put that free function inside the class as a friend and also make it inline, this is now no longer findable using ADL because it's technically not in that enclosing namespace, which means the only way, sorry, the only way to find it is with ADL. Let's get that the right way around. So if you try to call it qualified with namespace, that's an error. But if you call it unqualified, ADL picks it up. So I can't remember why I put this slide in. I knew this was a bad idea. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> what's, the, um, what's the benefit of this? Is it just a, a curiosity? Well, imagine we're talking about operators. The Ostream operator overload here. Uh, now we introduce another class that's um, not in that namespace. If we uh, introduce an error, this is the sort of error message we're going to see. And I'm sure we're all familiar with this. In fact, this is just an extract, and hopefully you can read it all. <laughs> but in case you can't, just to zoom in, there's the bit that actually reflects the error that we introduced. The rest of it's just noise coming from all the additional overloads that we're, we're finding because of ADL. So if we can hide all of these overloads from ADL, then we can drastically reduce the number of errors we, that we get. And that sort of reflects the uh, what we cut out. But um, I'll zoom straight on to this this proposal from um, uh, Walter E. Brown and others. Recommendations for specifying hidden friends. So this was actually um, raised as a, uh, a standards proposal for the benefit of other standards proposals, so that they can consider using this technique to reduce the number of overloads uh, that we. We're actually exposed to not just error messages, but also uh, compile times as well. Uh, having to consider all those additional overloads uh, has a bit of a drag. So I think it's really good that we're going in this direction. Whether you actually use this technique yourself um, is up to you, because there is a trade-off in that you do have to make them inline um, friends of the class, which may not have been what you wanted to do otherwise. There is another proposal, the independence of declaration which proposes a, a new keyword to actually allow you to do the same thing without changing how you design the code. But do note the date of this proposal, April the 1st uh, of this year. <laughs> I'm not saying that means anything, but um, if you want to go and have a look at that, there's the, the GitHub link. So that was it. Thank you. <laughs>